Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 13. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the God of the God came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am a I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in the pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there was a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Let us all pray. Lord God, merciful Father, we praise you for the light of this day, when by your spirit you will shine in our hearts through the preaching and the teaching of your gospel. Open all of our eyes that we may behold the wonderful truths of your salvation and find new strength and hope in your promises. Bless the preaching and teaching of your word throughout your church. Give power and conviction to your ministers, that their testimony to your holiness and grace may ring clear and true to your revealed word. Guide us to your house today so that we may find true adventure in the abundant life which you have promised all who love you. In your name we do pray, amen. Moses was the first great liberator of the nation of Israel, leading them out of captivity in Egypt to the Promised Land. Elijah, arguably, is of equal importance in the history of the nation of Israel because he freed the nation from the oppression of their lowercase g God. It's a very interesting read. I highly recommend it. 1 Kings 16 through 2 Kings 2, if you have some time this afternoon to learn more about Elijah's life. The place of service that God called Elijah into was really loud. And Elijah had to deal with the noise. He had to deal with the noise of scarcity mentality that believes resources are limited and there won't be enough. He had to deal with the noise of the lies that are told by lowercase g gods. And he had to deal with the noise of his own fear in order to find his uppercase G, God, and to replenish his spirit and to renew his call. 
So first, let's look at the political environment that Elijah was called into. Ahab was the king of Israel. And Ahab was the worst of the worst. In, Bible, in the Bible, criteria for what makes a good king is whether or not they are faithful to God. Well, Ahab, through a political marriage alliance with one of the neighboring countries, invited the religion of that country into Israel and completely neglected the worship of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, as, as often the case in First Testament stories, this kind of behavior usually makes God pretty mad. So God appoints Elijah as a prophet to deliver this message to Ahab. Ahab, there's going to be a drought. Well, think for just a minute about the consequences of a drought. It's much more than just not having fresh drinking water. A drought means there's going to be famine, which there is. There's going to be disease, which there is. And there's going to be war. And there's plenty of it in these stories. So that's very bad news for Ahab. And here's another indicator of what a bad king he was. It didn't change his behavior at all. He just gets mad at Elijah, right? The messenger. <clears throat> so to protect Elijah, God sends him out into the wilderness. He wanders around eating bread and carrion meat that falls from the talons of ravens. <laughs> and uh, drinks the water in a creek until it dries up. And then he meets a widow. And he asks her to bake him a biscuit. And the widow says, sure, I'll fix you a biscuit. It's my last measure of wheat and oil. I was about to fix it for my son and I, that we may eat it and die. There's that scarcity mentality, right? <laughs> oh, it's so loud. You know, Florence Christian Church has had to deal with the noise of scarcity mentality in our heads. We sometimes grumble that people take more than their fair share out of the care and share pantry. We uh, kind of feel the anxiety of how risky it is to open our doors so generously to our unhoused neighbors. And uh, we don't always trust the free and fresh food distribution folks who are taking food for five and six families at a time. Sometimes our small imaginations think that the loving kindness of God has limits. So Elijah says to us, as he said to that widow, do not be afraid. There will be enough. And of course there was. Of course there was enough. Each morning, the widow returned to her jar of meal and her jug of oil to find just enough for another batch of biscuits. My friends, we deal with the noise of scarcity by witnessing the abundance that is all around us every single morning. Look at that total money raised for the school supply drive. 134% of goal. <sighs> That's amazing. And my friends, that is not us. That is God in abundance, taking care of the people of God. Because you know, God's favorites are widows and orphans, and they need to be.
our favorites. So three years of this drought passes by, and it's time for it to end. So God sends Elijah back to Ahab, and Elijah just gets up and goes. No complaint, no whining, just gets up and goes. And he is so bold in the face of Ahab's perceived power. Ahab says to him, oh, it's you, you troubler of Israel. (laughs) And Elijah says, oh, no, I am not the troubler, Ahab. You are. And Elijah challenges the priests of that religion that has replaced the worship of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to a duel. The God of Israel will be pitted against the God of the Sidonians. I can almost see the promotional poster. And in this dramatic scene where the priests dance around the altar, they are begging their God to show up. And the day goes on and they dance around their altar. You know, I'm kind of reminded of how we will place our trust and our hope in things or in people, or in that next job, or that better neighborhood, or, you know, it'll be so much better when they behave like they should, or I'll be happy when I get, you can fill in the blank. We dance around and around and around trying to satisfy our own needs and we are exhausted it's so loud inside the chaos of all our small g gods that we chase in the pursuit of happiness my friends we have to deal with that noise And we have to put God where God belongs. So how did Elijah do it? Elijah put on a bit of a show himself. He sets up an altar. He slaughters a bull. And he dumps gallons and gallons and gallons of water on top of that altar. I remind you, it's been a three-year drought. How precious was all of that water? And then Elijah steps back, and he prays a faithful prayer that God, capital G, will show up and turn back the hearts of the people. Elijah understood his calling. And it was not about himself. It was not about his own needs. It was about the people of Israel and about setting them free from their oppression. In the assurance of his mission, he believed God would be faithful. And don't you know, God was. Of course God was. The fire just absolutely poured down out of heaven all over that altar, devoured the bull, even lapped up the water. And on top of that, God sent rain to replenish the people and to restore the earth. Florence Christian Church When you remain faithful to your mission to celebrate God's welcome table of abundant love, grace, and acceptance, you will see God show up in mightier ways than these. Lean in to your abundant welcome. Ramp up your bold service. 
and replenish your faith every day. True happiness will be your banner when you experience the joy of seeing God at work in this community. Well, now Ahab is seriously mad, as you would imagine. And Elijah's life is being threatened. And we pick up today's scripture that Jim read for us. For all the times that Elijah saw God show up faithful, Elijah is scared for his life. And his fear is as loud as this great and powerful rock-splitting wind. His fear is thunderously loud as a mountain-shaking earthquake. And his fear is deafening as an all-consuming fire. And God was not in his fear. I'm encouraged by that. Because it reminds me that sometimes all of us forget how faithful God is. And we need reminders. And you know that God will show up in a faithful, gentle, compassionate whisper. Because God will meet us right where we are. We serve a God at Florence Christian Church that meets our needs. So trust in this, capital G, God. And because this God lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And because we know who holds the future, life is worth the living just because Jesus lives.